In this video we can give you an introduction to Timer Pro's line balancing module. You can see here we've got a process that we've already been working on here and just to make it simpler to see I'm going to come down here I'm going to hit the right button on one of the tasks and I'm going to rename the tasks here. I'm just going to make it, make it operator 1 through 7 here so we can see what's happening just a little bit easier here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm ready to balance this. Now let's say we're pretty happy with the balance we have here but suddenly one day one of the operators doesn't appear. So now you've only got six operators and you need to rebalance the work and find out how much you can actually make. So in this case what you would do is go to the summary tab here and you click on the balance work here. Now here you can see you've got three options that you can dis uh, choose from. You can do by number of operators which is what we're going to do first here. Particular production per hour or a specific tag time. So let's come back to the number of operators and today we've only got six operators so we're going to click on six here we click on balance and it goes through its iterative process which is talked about in a separate video in the line balancing section but here you can see it's said that the six operators can be 92% utilized and they're going to be able to produce six, just over 64 units uh, per hour. We click on the details it shows you how the work is going to be spread between the six operators involved here and then we click on the save and it will then produce the balance with six operators in it here. Now at this point we can do things like click on the right mouse button in the background. We can put in a target tag line. Now the tag time line by default will uh, pick the highest station, in this case station 4 here. So we can maybe put in like 56 here. And you see the line being drawn across there. Down at the bottom you might want to know the totals by individual task. Hit the right mouse button here and select the descriptives and time option. And you'll see it shows you the time here. So if I move one activity from operator 2 to operator 1. Watch the numbers at the bottom change there as I make the the drop there. You can see them changing right here. Okay, so let's see. This, this gives you an idea of how you can maybe balance the work here. From here you can produce various reports uh, such as your, um, your Yamazumi chart. If you come here you can pop it out. Just click here. Give it a second and that information is all out dumped out into the Yamazumi chart right here. Let's come back over here and uh, let's turn off the tag timeline. This is a toggle the tag timeline. So you can turn it on and off there. So let's say now uh, things are going well and the uh, your demand goes up. So what you need to do is you have to produce more units. So what you can do here, you can just click on balance work again. And this time we can say production. Now notice our current plan will, it will let us do about 64 an hour. Let's say things are going really well and now you need to produce 87 an hour. How many people do you need? So in that case you come in here, you click on production and you put in here 87. And it will tell you how many people you need to produce 87, in this case 9 people. But look at what it's telling you here. Those 9 people will be 82.9% utilized. Notice here, because of the iterative process, that you can see that 9 people can be anywhere from being 77% utilized and producing just under 82 units, or being 86% utilized and producing 90 units. So now you've got a choice. You can either go with the 87 you're looking for, or if you maybe want to build up a little bit of inventory, you can come down here and select, I'm going to make 90 per hour, and I'll have some uh, backup here. So let's say you wanted to do that, you click on the 90, click on the details, it shows you how it's going to break out the work content, and then click on the save, and now it will generate the nine operators here. Now you can see at the end here we're not really very well utilized in the last operator. Uh, maybe you can move a few things around to uh, to maybe eliminate that operator. Now what I'm going to do here obviously you can't practically do it. But you have to know what you're doing here. I can grab it, an element and drop it here. Maybe take some work from here, move it over here and then I can maybe take some work from here and maybe put it over here. Now obviously you have to make sure you can do this and that might let me split this activity in two. So I could split this activity in two, put some of it here and maybe look and see how I can maybe get rid of one of these elements here. So maybe you could drop this inspect here. So you could delete that one, delete that activity and maybe take this one and put it up here. Right? That might allow us to remove the operator number nine here delete the task and we can take it out here. So these are the kind of things you can do based upon the information you can get from the line balancing area here. Now what we're looking at here, if we go back to the, this page here, you can see it's a value added, non-value added uh, view. And by default, uh, you will be able to grab an activity and move it anywhere you want just by dragging and dropping it. But obviously in certain cases, you can't do that. Certain things have to be performed in a certain sequence and uh, 
certain things have to be grouped together. They can't be performed separately. And maybe there's some things can't be moved. How would you handle that? Well, the view, the default view we're on here is a value added, non value added. The green is value added, the red is non value added, and the blue is required but non value added. I'm going to switch my view here to normal, grouped, and fixed. And the colors all change. Right? Now, these colors are defined again, if you remember. Over here, we go to the options here. We can define our different default colors. You can see this is normal activities here. There's also grouped and fixed capabilities here. How does that work? Well, let's say we're looking at this process. Right now, I can grab an element and move it anywhere I want because these are all normal activities. But let's just say this activity had to be performed with these two other activities. We can hit the right button here and we can say this is a grouped activity. Right button in this one, grouped activity. Right button here, grouped activity. Right. And if I grab this one here and I move it, they move as a block. You see that? They're all moving at the same time here. So this is how you can group activities and treat them as a block as you move it around your, your process here. Other things, maybe this um, attached funnel has to be in a specific spot. We can hit the right button. We can make that a fixed activity. So I can grab this and try and move it. It will look like it's going to move but it's not going to move because we fixed it here. We cannot move it here. So in this way, you can actually group together elements that have to be performed together. And you can fix elements here. The Timer Pro program will never change the sequence of your elements. It will never break up grouped elements and it will never move uh, fixed elements here. So that gives you some capabilities on how to control the process here. Now here we've got another example here. In this case, we've got 25 operators. Now notice the stacks get closer together as you as you introduce more uh, stations here. Now obviously this would be an ideal case to maybe scroll here. So you can scroll in and out and then you can scroll along here to see the details of what you're looking at here. But I'm just going to keep it uh, very, very tight so we can see the kind of things that's happening here. So we've got a certain uh, process here. I'm just going to go to the summary here and click on my balance work. So here we have it and we're getting roughly 82 units an hour. So let's say your demand goes up. Now you need to produce 97. How many people should you put on here? So we can go to the production here. We could say 97 and then click on this. And it tells us now we need 30 operators. Again, we've got a choice. We can do 30 operators to give us 97 or maybe almost 98 by a slightly different configuration. We're going to go with the 97. We don't want to build up any inventory here. We click on the details. It shows us what it's going to do all the way down to operator 30 here. And we click on the save. And what you can see now, the bars just get narrower as we do this here, right? So we can move around like, like this here. Perhaps things are not going so well. Now you need to change it again. We can click on the balance and we might decide to, go to change it by tack time here. So you can see when I come back into this again, if I just do it one more time here, you can see my current tack time here is about 36 seconds. Let's say demand is not quite what it used to be and now your tack time can go up to 52 seconds. How many people can you need? So we can come in here and say tack time and we say we want 52 seconds. Now remember your, your tack time can be in seconds, minutes or hours depending upon your particular needs. We click on the balance, it shows we need 21 operators. We click on the details, it shows us what it's going to do here. We click on the save and it's going to reorganize the work into 21 stations here. Right, you can see we've got a little bit extra here. So maybe we could take this one and put it up here. Right, and then we could take this guy, put the stock up here, and maybe move some of the work content around to try and balance the work just a little bit better here uh, based on what we have here. Now you'll notice some of these elements are quite uh, narrow here. So we can also obviously scroll them as we said before this way. And if they're really small, you can scroll them up the way as well here. So you can actually get a good view into what's happening around your whole process and don't forget also the perspective view here over here which gives you a little preview and therefore you see the little crosshair look at the crosshair and the perspective here as I move around so it gives you a good point of reference as to where you are in the process if I grab one here and move it over to the second station here you can see that taking effect in the perspective here um, if you want to fit it back into the window you just say view all and it will show it everything together there for you so this gives you an excellent way of maybe taking this one here and deleting that task. We don't need that anymore. We've got everything in here. So now we've got it down to 20 operators. So you can see how you can use the balancing module to look for opportunities to improve your uh, throughput in your facility.